nice nice fall day. It was a little sunny, sunnier earlier. But uh, you can see the leaves started to change. Be nice to be out on the hammock. Join that. Saw some deer out there earlier. Anyway, it's just a little, little, a few little scenes from outside your Arsenal Advisor Studios. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, this video, um, <clears throat> it's about uh, this this ride all. I don't know if it's focusing in. Doesn't appear to be focusing in. So what it is. Non Seas Rydall Gun Grease, the company's Rydall. That's uh, capital R, little y, capital D, uh, O L. Um, so they make a uh, a hexagonal boron nitride PTFE molybdenum uh, grease. Um, uh, from one of my earlier videos, um, I think one of the comparisons of the uh, the various. Uh, 80% uh, polymer type lowers I was working with. Um, I saw JP Enterprises refer to that that very product um, as a trigger job and a bottle. I thought, hey, that's pretty neat. I'd like to experiment with that. So I contacted Rydall, make sure I got the uh, the right kind of um, grease for the uh, trigger application. And I think the JP product was uh, an AR spring kit product so I'm going to compare it to um, I'm going to use it first on an basic an AR-15 trigger setup I'm going to use the one that's in my XM uh, 177E2 uh, replica uh, rifle carbine um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trigger part and I'm going to take the uh, the grease and uh, work it into the the mating surfaces of the uh, the trigger and the hammer. Um, there's the sear surface. I'm going to find some other surfaces, but I guess some of the key surfaces are the um, the sear, and then uh, I guess there's the um, the re rear part of the um, hammer that's got that, I think that interfaces with the disconnector. Um, I was looking at some instructions, and I think it says that the grease is supposed to work it in. So this could be an iterative process where the um, the grease and the um, the the components of the grease work their way into the um, you know the surface of the metal, um, and then maybe build up a um, a nice uh, surface that may be an improvement over the stock um, trigger surfaces. Um, in the, in this XM, I just have a standard um, basic uh, military style trigger. It's not a two stage; it's a single stage. Uh, and I've used um, generally CLP and common you know, lubricant products on it, uh, probably mostly CLP, uh, you know, break free brand CLP. Um, so I'm going to you know, do a, um, I've got the trigger, trigger, uh, pull, uh, scale. So I'm going to do, uh, 10 trigger pulls, take the average before I use this other product. And then uh, I'm going to check it afterwards after like one application, just see what it is. And then, uh, you know, maybe maybe later on I'll follow up with, uh, after a couple other applications, see if anything changes. And uh, just kind of see, see how it works. Okay, so here's how we have the um, lower receiver set up in the vise. I have this Wheeler Delta Series AR-15 Magwell vise block. Took the actual block off of the base. You can put it in a regular vise, um, and it has this this uh, little arm or piece. You can fold that down right in front of the hammer, so that you can you can dry fire you know, the trigger. Catches it pretty well. Okay, so what I'm using is this Lyman trigger pull scale. Um, it's supposed to take up to 10 readings and do an average. If you take more than 10, it averages the last 10 readings. But I found that it's not... At some point, after a few few readings, it seems to get the same reading, and I don't have as much confidence that it's working time after time. Um... So you start by hitting the ready button, 
makes a beep and then you face the front of it by the trigger and you pull and you can see it's recording and in there uh, it's giving me a reading of seven pounds nine point four ounces so it says not to hit ready again or you start over the string so I'm gonna do a oops I gotta cock the hammer pulling again you don't see it doing anything and it's the same reading again maybe you can have the same reading so let me try it a third time because I have noticed that you may not see it recording the um, the weight as you're pulling but all of a sudden at the end it'll give you a new reading so anyway so that's a couple of those readings in a row so I'm gonna just hit ready that clears out the string and it seems to work so after that I did 10 individual uh, readings and I'm, I'm gonna average them to get my data um, so at this point I'm going to take the, probably take the hammer out so I can get to the surfaces and apply the grease and then retest it all. Okay, so I have my, uh, my bench block. I'm going to take out the, uh, the hammer. Might, might spring out so you can see um, the front of the trigger this is the sear and that uh, acts upon this other surface down near the bottom of the hammer and that's where I want to focus on applying the applying the grease you can't too easily see the front but this this edge is very sharp and that's important so I'm going to apply the grease to the front and the top of this surface so what I thought I would do is take this uh, gun cleaner degreaser and just kind of apply that to a um, q-tip and try to rinse off that area of the, the trigger or hammer in this case and do the front of the trigger was so with this grease uh, that I'm trying you're supposed to work it into the um, the surfaces so maybe with this Degreaser can take a little bit off. I'll, I'll reapply oil in the other areas because another thing you got to watch out for is you're going to degrease something. You, you want to get your oils back on onto the other surfaces. But I'm going to do a cleaning here just in case that improves the adherence of this grease to the metal surfaces that it's supposed to improve uh, upon. Okay, so here's a little. Uh, Little jar of the uh, non seize ride all gun grease came with a q tip, so uh, I figure you can just apply it with a q tip. It's black, maybe we'll see. Um, so I'm just gonna apply it inside of this part. As you work it in, you can probably put it on heavy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you can rub it in and then you can just put it on actually. That when you put when I put the hammer back into the the lower and then work it back and forth it might help move the product into the work it into the surface of the metal. Let's put a, a little bit more back in there. I'll 
getting little so I can put it into the top top of the front of the trigger and I'm just kind of just swirling around pushing it in here and we'll get a little more try to work it into the front of the trigger So I'm going to do that for a little while. Okay. Get a little more. Just to go on heavy. Okay, so now I'm going to put the... Uh, Hammer back in the uh, the lower. Got to make sure the uh, hammer spring goes on top of the trigger spring. Okay, so I kind of pushed it down onto the trigger. Sometimes I use the punch just to kind of go in where the pin is so that I can kind of hold it in place while I put the um, hammer pin in. Actually, if you notice on the, um, the pin, there's a little thinner area and there's a, a little wire or spring inside the hammer that engages with this to help the, uh, the pin stay in place. I'm trying to keep my, my thumb over top of the hammer so it doesn't spring out. I'm going to start putting the... Um, So I don't quite have the hammer lined up. Usually if I get the right spot, I can usually just tap it in and get it to the, uh, a little bit into the uh, hammer. Actually, there, I just did it. Well, it took a while. So now I just kind of advance the pin a little bit, light tapping. I get the um, pin about almost up to where it hits that little spring inside the hammer. And 
now I'm just trying to hold the uh, hammer in place. Trying to keep it lined up. I kind of see it from this side. Okay, so I've gotten past the, uh, the little wire and I can see the pin right up against the uh, left side of the receiver so I just try to okay I can hold it like this looks like it's lined up might be able to just It. I'm just using light taps because if it's not lined up I'm not going to go banging all over everything it calls marks so. okay now now it's in So, hopefully there's an, some more of that grease on the end of those surfaces. And I can just work the um, trigger back and forth and the hammer back and forth. I'm trying to be careful not to let the hammer drop on the bare back of the magazine well. Actually, you can see, you can actually see this surface on the bottom of the um, hammer. You can probably apply that without taking the hammer out. Um, I think I might even be able to see the front of the trigger. But anyway, I think this is going to be in an iterative process of uh, applying the grease because it says to work it in and and use of the hammer and the trigger will, will move the large parts of the grease out and I'll leave the film that it wants to build up so you just have to reapply um, so I'm sure there's all kinds of ways of experimenting with how to get the grease down in there if you don't want to take the trigger apart each time Okay, so I'm going to hit the ready, the ready button. The beep signifies I can take a reading. I'm just pulling back on the trigger. That one's got 7 pounds, 4.7 ounces. And we'll just take uh, single readings at a time. Six pounds, fourteen point one. Six pounds, fifteen point eight ounces. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing that. I'm going to get ten readings and then average them, and then we'll do some comparison. Actually, I'll probably switch back to kilograms as well because that makes an easy number to, to add up than, than the pounds and the ounces, the, the fractional ounces. Okay. So here's the string I actually measured and took an average of. So I came up with 3.3127 kilograms average as compared to 3.3388 kilograms average so went down a little bit over here is like seven pounds 5.7 ounces versus seven pounds 4.85 ounces so it was a little bit less um, not a whole lot um, so what I'm going to do is try to apply more of the grease to the uh, the bottom of the hammer as it's in the in the lower
So this grease also comes in syringes. A fairly big syringe. I have a uh, screw. Guess you can pause it. Okay, so I was gonna maybe use one of these syringes to um, apply the uh, grease right to the bottom of the hammer, but it's it's too big to fit in the fire control uh, pocket there. So I'm gonna go back to the um, tub of grease. I'll just break off a little bit of a Q-tip. Get some of that grease. I'm going to put it right down into that area at the bottom of the hammer that I was pointing out earlier. I'm going to put some down the top of the trigger. See if maybe we can get that worked in. And I'll just work the hammer and trigger back like I was doing before. And maybe I'll apply a little more because the big globs of grease and they move out of the way. Obviously, obviously, as the um, the trigger and the hammer engage. So maybe I'll do that for a little, little bit more. Okay, so did the, um, I guess a third string or a, or a second string after applying some of the grease at the bottom of the um, hammer, and came up with an average of 3.1752 kilograms. Which is roughly 7.0011 pounds or 7 pounds 0 0.00176 ounces. So uh, I guess we started with 7 pounds 5.7 ounces. Now it seems to be averaging at 7 pounds, a little re reduction in the weight. So I'll probably try one more application of the grease, work it in there and see if that changes anything even more. Because I actually, I'm not really sure when you talk about working in something or if you use grease for a regular, a long period of time, maybe the products that can build up a, a film or affect the surface of the metal underneath, you know, it can take a while to um, work up. I'm not really sure if, you know, a couple times in rapid succession in, in, in one sitting is going to work in the material um, to get such a build up. But uh, I'll just try it one more time. Okay, so here's a uh, third string after applying the, the ride all grease to the bottom of the hammer, top of the trigger, up near the sear. Uh, looks like it got it down to, on average, 3.1417 uh, kilograms, which is about 6.9263 pounds, or 6 pounds, 14 0.82 ounces um, and then if you see this arrow it looks like I just after I did 10 10 readings hitting the ready button before each one I just decided to hit the average button on the the um, scale was 3.142 so I'm thinking that you do hit ready before each reading because it's 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 the same as um you know, 3.142 is this, that's what this rounds up to, 3.1417, rounds up to 3.142. Um, so I think the instructions might have said if you hit ready a second time, but you're probably supposed to hit it between each time that you take a reading. So anyway, so maybe I'm finally figuring out how to use the uh, trigger pull scale. All right, so coming back to this page that had all the other strings, looking down here at the bottom. So I just took 
uh, 3.1417 divided that by the original 3.338 that we had from the stock conventionally lubricated military style trigger um, divide that yeah, just dividing this the the best numbers we had versus the the original uh, the, the, the lower numbers now about 0.94 of the original um, so if I subtract that from one I'm about 0.059 multiply that by 100 maybe you get 5.9 percent I'm not sure if that's the correct math say that it's six percent lighter after a little bit of application but um i think the last one it was 0.04 uh different now it's 0.059 you know different um but anyway it went from seven pounds 5.77 ounces to six pounds 14.8 something ounces so you know, I'll continue to use the product and maybe we can we can check this uh, back later on uh, after some time and see if it's better or the same okay so so I'll put the uh, rifle back together I re-lubricated I, I put some uh, CLP around where I had used that degreaser um, in case it didn't get any coating of the grease that I was using so this is the, uh, the product um, looks a little backwards on the uh, screen. I have to check that. But anyway, um, as I was using the grease and applying it, yeah, you know, I think we started out with uh, seven pounds, five point seven seven ounce trigger, and then we dipped down to after a th I think it was a third application of putting the grease on and working it back and forth with the the, the hammer and the trigger. For all we got down to six pounds, fourteen point eight five ounces. Um, I did uh, ten readings and averaged them. I'm not sure if that's, um, you know, in some scientific trials you you have like a control. So I didn't have uh, another another rifle where I just uh, relubricated with the regular CLP those same three times that I was using the other product to compare to see if that would also improve. But um, what I was hoping to see is if the uh, the trigger got uh, maybe a slightly lighter trigger pull when the other recommendation from the other company said it's like a trigger job in a bottle. So I wanted to see if the trigger pull would go down. Seems to have gone, gone down a little bit. Um, but with a lot of coatings in greases, I think you're supposed to, over time you use them, the films can build up on the on the metal and do um, the things that it does to add to the lubris, lubricity um, between between the parts relative to each other um, so over time I'll probably keep using the product on on this this rifle we can go back and check it at some point see how it's doing um, most of the other ARs I have they have two stage triggers so it's not quite the same standard military trigger that this has in it um, I was thinking about doing a few strings, relubricating with CLP like I normally do on those triggers and see what happens. I, I, I might still, but I wanted to get this. I had this had the product. I wanted to get some uh, testing done. and It's easier for me to take, take apart and put back together my AR triggers. Um, so that's why I wanted to do that. Um, but I do plan on trying the Rydol product out on um, my SCAR. Because the scar's got a very, very heavy trigger, trigger pull, and it's uh, kind of got a grainy kind of, you know, feeling to it uh, right before it breaks. Um, now, besides the um, the weight of the trigger pull, um, I was testing one thing I didn't really pay attention to on this one before before doing the uh, the test was to um, just feel how the the trigger pull was. And it seems to be a pretty clean break and I'm feeling graininess, but I can't remember if I, if it was like that before. So, um, so, so far so good. Um, check out Rydol. Um, it's, it's capital R, little y, capital D. I'll translate it in case this is coming across backwards. Uh, capital D, O, L. Um, it's rideall.com and uh, info at rideall.com. 
Uh, they're out of Maryville, Tennessee. So, um, I guess you've seen the video, it comes in syringes and they have uh, jars. So, uh, you know, check it out for yourself, try it out. Um, I'm going to keep using it and maybe test it myself later. Maybe I'll put some updated uh, information in some future videos. Um, so, uh, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to review. Um, you can see me uh, trying to put the uh, hammer back in. It's giving me a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a struggle. Um, I don't have any, you know, big bench. I mean, I have the bench blocks, and it's easy for punching the pins out. And then, um, you know, you just try to try to line it up and try to keep the, uh, the hammer from, you know, popping out. So I thought that was kind of funny. So you could see see what it actually happens with uh, your arsenal advisor trying to do stuff. <laughs> All right. Well. Um, Thanks a lot for tuning in, and um, if you have any uh, any other, if you want to contact me for any other reason or any other, ask any other uh, particular questions, I have a little bit of contact information on the uh, the end screen. All right, hey, thanks a lot.